Sarah was excited but nervous as she arrived at St. Mary's Hospital for her first night shift. The old building loomed in the darkness, its silhouette stark against the night sky. She had heard rumors about the hospital being haunted, but she dismissed them as mere superstitions. Tonight, she would find out the truth. As Sarah walked through the dimly lit hallways, the flickering lights cast eerie shadows on the walls. The hospital was unusually quiet, with only the faint hum of machinery breaking the silence. She felt a chill run down her spine, but she tried to shake off the feeling of unease. It was just her imagination, she told herself. While organizing patient records, Sarah came across an old file with no name, just the initials J.D., and a cryptic note about a tragic accident. Curious, she asked one of the senior nurses about it, but the nurse's face grew pale. She warned Sarah not to dig into the past and to leave the record alone. This only fueled Sarah's curiosity. Later that night, as Sarah passed by a closed, unused wing of the hospital, she felt a sudden cold breeze. Faint whispers seemed to float through the air, sending shivers down her spine. She stopped and listened, but the whispers faded away. Determined to uncover the truth, she decided to explore the unused wing. Sarah pushed open the door to the abandoned wing, her flashlight revealing dusty equipment and old, broken furniture. The air was heavy with the scent of decay and neglect. As she ventured deeper, she felt an overwhelming sense of sadness and despair. It was as if the walls themselves were crying out in anguish. Suddenly, a ghostly apparition appeared before her. It was a man in a hospital gown, his eyes filled with sorrow and pain. Sarah froze, unable to move as the apparition reached out towards her. He seemed to be trying to communicate something, but no words came out. Then, as quickly as he had appeared, he vanished into thin air. Shaken but determined, Sarah continued exploring and found an old journal hidden in a drawer. The journal was filled with entries about strange occurrences and patient deaths, all centered around the mysterious J.D. The entries detailed eerie incidents, unexplained noises, and ghostly sightings. It was clear that something terrible had happened here. As Sarah read further, she learned about a tragic fire that had claimed many lives years ago. Among the victims was a young doctor named James Daniels, whose initials matched those in the mysterious patient record. The journal described how his spirit was said to haunt the hospital, unable to find peace after the horrific event. James Daniels' ghost appeared again, this time pointing towards a locked room at the end of the hallway. Sarah felt a strange compulsion to follow. She found an old key in the drawer and used it to unlock the room. Inside, she discovered a small, dusty office with medical files and personal belongings scattered everywhere. In the small office, Sarah uncovered forgotten medical files that revealed the truth about the fire. The documents detailed a conspiracy involving hospital administrators who had covered up faulty wiring that led to the blaze. James Daniels had tried to expose the truth, but had been silenced. His death was not just a tragic accident, it was murder. Sarah felt a sense of urgency as she pieced together the evidence. She realized she had to bring the truth to light to help James Daniels find peace. Armed with the files, she knew she had to confront the hospital administration and reveal the dark history that had been buried for so long. The next morning, Sarah confronted the hospital administrator with the evidence she had found. She demanded justice for James Daniels and the other victims of the fire. The administrator's face turned pale as he realized the extent of the cover-up. He had no choice but to acknowledge the truth and take steps to address the past wrongs. That night, as Sarah walked through the hospital one last time, the ghost of James Daniels appeared before her. This time, his face was filled with gratitude and peace. He nodded to her, a silent thank you for helping him find closure. As he faded away, Sarah felt a sense of calm wash over her, knowing she had done the right thing. In the weeks that followed, St. Mary's Hospital began to heal. Renovations started, 
and the atmosphere became brighter and more hopeful. The dark history of the hospital was finally being addressed, and the spirits that had haunted its halls found peace. Sarah continued her work, knowing she had made a difference. As dawn broke, Sarah stood outside the hospital, ready to face a new day. She felt a deep sense of accomplishment and hope. The echoes of the past had been silenced, and St. Mary's was on the path to becoming a place of healing once more. Sarah knew that she had not only helped the spirits, but also ensured a brighter future for the hospital and its patients. Alex and Emily stood in front of the old, abandoned mansion they had just inherited from Alex's distant uncle. The mansion was grand but worn, its windows dark and foreboding. Despite its eerie appearance, the couple was excited to explore their new home, unaware of the secrets it held within its walls. As they explored the mansion, Alex and Emily found a large, dusty bookshelf in the library. While cleaning, they accidentally triggered a mechanism, revealing a hidden door behind the shelf. Intrigued, they decided to open it, their curiosity piqued by the mystery of what lay beyond. The hidden door led to a sealed room filled with old furniture, cobwebs, and an unsettling atmosphere. The air was thick with dust, and the room had a sense of abandonment that sent chills down their spines. They found an old diary on a table, its pages yellowed with age, hinting at the room's dark history. Emily began reading the diary aloud. It detailed the tragic story of the mansion's previous owner, a reclusive artist named Vincent. The entries spoke of his obsession with capturing the essence of life in his paintings, leading to his descent into madness. He had sealed himself in this very room, never to be seen again. On the wall of the sealed room hung a haunting painting of a woman, lifelike and filled with sorrow. Her eyes seemed to follow them, and an eerie sense of sadness emanated from the canvas. Alex and Emily couldn't shake the feeling that the woman in the painting was trying to communicate something to them. After discovering the sealed room, strange occurrences began happening in the mansion. Doors would slam shut on their own, whispers echoed through the hallways, and cold drafts seemed to come from nowhere. The couple grew increasingly uneasy, feeling as if they were being watched by unseen eyes. Emily began having vivid nightmares about Vincent and the woman in the painting. Each night, she would wake up in a cold sweat, her dreams filled with scenes of Vincent's descent into madness and the woman's sorrowful eyes. She felt an urgent need to uncover the truth about the mansion and its haunting secrets. Determined to find answers, Alex and Emily went to the local library to research the mansion's history. They found old newspaper clippings about Vincent's disappearance and the mysterious deaths of several women in the area, all of whom had been subjects of Vincent's paintings. The puzzle pieces began to fit together. Seeking more insight, Alex and Emily invited a medium to the mansion. The medium immediately sensed a powerful presence and suggested holding a seance to communicate with the spirits. That night, they gathered in the sealed room, hoping to uncover the truth behind the haunting. During the seance, the spirit of the woman in the painting revealed herself. She was Vincent's lover, who had been trapped in the painting by his dark magic. Vincent's obsession had led him to experiment with forbidden rituals, trying to capture her essence in his art. Her spirit was now bound to the painting, unable to find peace. The woman's spirit pleaded with Alex and Emily to break the curse and free her from the painting. She explained that Vincent's madness had created a cycle of torment, trapping her and other souls in the mansion. The couple felt a deep sympathy for her plight and vowed to help her find peace. Following the instructions left in Vincent's diary, Alex and Emily performed a ritual to break the curse. They gathered the necessary items and chanted the incantations, their voices trembling with fear and determination. As they completed the ritual, the room filled with a blinding light. 
and the oppressive atmosphere lifted. The spirit of the woman was released from the painting. Her face transformed from sorrow to peace as she ascended into the light. Alex and Emily watched in awe, feeling a profound sense of relief and accomplishment. They had freed her from her torment and ended the haunting that had plagued the mansion. In the days that followed, the mansion's atmosphere changed dramatically. The once cold and eerie halls became warm and inviting. Alex and Emily felt a renewed sense of hope and purpose. They decided to restore the mansion, honoring the memory of the spirits they had freed and creating a new beginning for themselves. As the sun set on the restored mansion, Alex and Emily stood outside, hand in hand. They were ready to start their new life together, free from the shadows of the past. The secrets of the sealed room had been uncovered, and the spirits had found peace. The mansion was no longer a place of sorrow, but a home filled with love and hope. It was a day like any other when the announcement came. The entire city was to go under mandatory quarantine due to a sudden outbreak. The streets emptied, and an eerie silence settled over the city. Residents were ordered to stay indoors, cut off from the outside world, waiting for the nightmare to end. Mia, a young woman living alone in her apartment, peered out the window at the desolate cityscape. She felt a deep sense of isolation, the walls of her apartment closing in on her. With no one to talk to and nothing to do, the days began to blur together, and the oppressive silence became her constant companion. One night, Mia heard strange noises coming from the apartment above hers. Footsteps echoed in the stillness, followed by muffled voices. She knew the apartment above was supposed to be empty, its occupants having left before the quarantine began. The unsettling sounds continued night after night, growing louder and more disturbing. Mia's anxiety grew when she started finding cryptic messages slipped under her door. The notes written in shaky handwriting, warned her to stay inside and keep quiet. The messages mentioned them watching and waiting, sending chills down her spine. She didn't know who was sending the notes, but the fear in the words was palpable. One evening, Mia saw a shadowy figure in the hallway outside her apartment. It stood there, watching her through the peephole, its form indistinct and menacing. Before she could react, the figure vanished into thin air. Terrified, Mia double-checked the locks on her door and windows, feeling a growing sense of dread. As if things couldn't get worse, a sudden power outage plunged Mia's apartment into darkness. Her only source of light was a flickering flashlight. She tried to stay calm, but the oppressive darkness and the eerie silence amplified her fear. She felt as though she was being watched, the sense of an unseen presence growing stronger. While searching for candles, Mia stumbled upon an old, dusty journal hidden in a drawer. The journal belonged to a previous tenant and was filled with entries about strange occurrences in the building. The tenant had written about unexplained noises, shadowy figures, and the feeling of being watched. The final entry spoke of something sinister lurking in the building, something that thrived in isolation. Panicked, Mia frantically searched her apartment for any clues or means of escape. She felt trapped, the walls closing in on her. Every creak and groan of the building made her jump, her fear mounting with each passing moment. She knew she had to find a way out, but the quarantine order kept her confined, isolated from the world outside. Just when Mia thought she couldn't take it anymore, a neighbor appeared at her door, whispering urgently. The neighbor warned her about the danger they all faced, telling her to stay hidden and quiet. They spoke of them, shadowy entities that thrived on fear and isolation, preying on the vulnerable. The neighbor vanished as quickly as they had appeared, leaving Mia more terrified than ever. Determined to face whatever was haunting her, Mia stood in the middle of her darkened apartment, flashlight in hand. The shadowy figures began to close in, their forms flickering in and out of existence. She felt their cold presence, 
their whispers filling her mind with terror. She knew she had to confront them, to stand her ground despite her fear. As Mia faced the shadowy figures, they began to reveal themselves. Their forms shifted, showing the faces of past tenants, each one consumed by fear and isolation. The building's dark history was laid bare before her, the tragedies and horrors that had taken place within its walls. The figures were the echoes of those who had suffered, trapped in an endless cycle of terror. Realizing she couldn't stay any longer, Mia formulated a plan to escape the building. She gathered her belongings, determined to break the quarantine. She knew it was dangerous, but staying meant certain doom. With the shadowy figures still lurking, she prepared herself for the risky journey to freedom. Mia navigated the darkened hallways of the building, flashlight in hand. She moved cautiously, avoiding the shadowy figures that prowled the corridors. Her heart pounded in her chest, every step fraught with danger. The exit seemed so far away, but she pressed on, driven by the need to escape. Just as she reached the building's exit, Mia found the shadowy figures blocking her path. She knew she had to confront them one last time. Summoning all her courage, she faced the figures, determined to break free from their grasp. The air grew cold and their whispers intensified, but Mia stood her ground, refusing to be consumed by fear. With a final burst of determination, Mia pushed past the shadowy figures, stepping into the light outside. As she did, the figures dissolved into mist, their oppressive presence lifting, she felt the warmth of the sun on her skin, a sense of relief and freedom washing over her. She had escaped the isolation and terror, ready to start anew.